Hey guys, this is Michael from Conquer Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to name molecular compounds. Molecular compounds are compounds made of exclusively nonmetals. So it's two or more nonmetals together that forms a molecular compound. Example of that is SO2. Both S and O are nonmetals, and so this is going to be a molecular compound. So naming molecular compounds are actually is actually really easy, and you just need to follow this right here. So you, you start off with the, the first element, you have to put a prefix in front. The prefixes I've listed here, the prefixes tell you how many of that element there are. So you, you really just need, for, for chemistry, you really just need to know the prefix for number 1 through 10. So you start with the prefix, and then you name the first element, and then you have the prefix for the second element with IDE in the end. It'll make a lot more sense when we go through the examples. And the additional rules is that there's no mono, so you don't you don't use the prefix mono in front of the first element, but you, you do use it in front of the second element. And if the ending value for the prefix is the same as the starting valve of the compound, you're going to drop one of the valves. Again, all this is going to make a lot more sense when we start doing examples. So let's apply those rules and name this molecular compound. So we'll start with identifying two elements. We have sulfur and we have oxygen. So we're going to write, I'm just going to write those two first. Uh, the first element, you just write the name of it. And then the second element, you write the name, but you tr uh, you add IDE to the end. So <clears throat> oxygen, the root of oxygen is ox, and then you were going to add IDE to the end, making it oxide. Now we just have to add the two prefixes in front. So I have a prefix in front of the sulfur and a prefix in front of the oxide. So that's where we look at the... The sub, how many of each element there are. So for sulfur, there is no subscript, so that means there's one sulfur, and one, the prefix is mono, but remember, we don't use mono in front of the first element, so it just becomes, it just stays sulfur. And then for oxygen, we have two oxygens, and the prefix for oxygen is di, so we put di in front, so then that means the final answer is for SO2, the name is sulfur dioxide. Let's do a couple more examples. Next one we'll do SI4. Again, first identify your two elements. So you have blank, you have the prefix sulfur, and then I is iodine, but we add IDE to the end of it, so it becomes iodide. And then we have a prefix in front of that. There's one sulfur, which means we're using mono, but we don't use mono for the first element, so it just stays sulfur. And then for, there's four, there's four iodides. Four is tetra, meaning we're going to put tetra in front of iodide, just meaning there's four iodides. So the name for SI4 is sulfur tetraiodide. Not too bad, huh? Let's do a couple more examples. Next one, N2O4. So first element is nitrogen, and we have two of them, so we're going to put di nitrogen and then the second element is oxygen um, again for oxygen we for the second element we add IDE to the root so instead of oxygen we're gonna write oxide like we did earlier and how many oxides do we have we have four so we're gonna put tetra oxide the name is gonna be di nitrogen tetra oxide just meaning there's two nitrogens and then there's four oxygens all right, let's do two more examples. Next, we'll be we'll do B two. Uh, why don't we do B two S three? So first element B is boron. How many of those do we have? We have two. So we look at a prefix for two, which is di. So we're gonna have di boron. And then the second element is sulfur. But again, we add IDE to the to the root. So instead of sulfur, it becomes sulfide. And how many of those do we have? We have three. So then we write tri sulfide. Then the name is for B2S3 is diboron trisulfide. Right, one more example. Let's do SEF6. SE the first element we just name it so SE is selenium and we have one SE 
which is mono, but remember we don't use mono for the first element, so it's just going to be selenium. Then for the for the second the second element, we add ID to the root. F is fluorine, so we add IDE to the end of that. It's fluoride, and we have six Fs. The prefix for six is hexa, meaning it's going to be hexa fluoride. And then let's actually do one more example. This the the last example we're going to do is CO. CO, so first uh, first element, carbon, and because there's only one carbon, we're just going to write carbon. We don't use mono for the first element again. For the second element, we have oxygen, which becomes oxide because we add IDE to the end of it, and we have one of them. We do use mono for the second element, so I'm going to write mon mono and then oxide, but then check out this rule. This rule says if we have... If the ending valve of the prefix is the same as the starting valve of the compound, then we're going to drop one of the valves. So if you look at mono, the prefix, and then oxide, the, the compound, or the, the element, notice there's two O's right here. They're repeating, so what we do is we drop one of them, making it monoxide instead of monoxide. Alright, let's uh, let's do this two examples. We're going to do opposite we're gonna I'm gonna give you the name and then we're gonna figure out the formula so for for this one let's do um let's write out the formula for phosphorus penta chloride All right so we let's, for, let's pick up the element the first element is phosphorus so we'll write p and there's no prefix in front of it, um, so it's going to be 1p because we don't use mono for the first element. Then the second element, it's chloride, which means it's chlorine, and we have five of them because, because of the prefix penta, so we just write PCl5. One more example, we'll do dinitrogen tetra hydride. First element is nitrogen. The prefix is di, which is 2. So it'll be N2. The second element, this is hydride, uh, if you, which is hydrogen with IDE and N of it. So it's, it's hydrogen and its prefix is tetra. Tetra is 4. So we have H4. So that means the final answer is going to be N2H4. And that's it. That's how you name molecular compounds. That's how you go from the formula to the name and how you go from the name to the formula. Hopefully that clarified a lot of, the, a lot of your questions and hopefully this makes a lot more sense. If you enjoyed this video and you found it to be helpful, like the video, subscribe to the channel because throughout the entire semester, I'm going to be posting up a ton and ton of videos that's going to help you do better in this class and help you conquer chemistry. And if you liked my tutoring style and you're interested in individual tutoring, check out www.conquerchemistry.com slash online tutoring. And of course, I'll include a link in the description below so you can just click on that link and it'll take you directly to the website. As always, keep practicing and I'll see you next time.